Matthew chapter 21, verse 33. Here another parable. Now Jesus is going in the temple and he's wiped it clean. He's kicked over the tables, shoved the animals out. And he's got the chief priests and everybody in an uproar. And he's just dealt with them when we last left. You know, what gives you this authority? Then he puts before them a question, which they can't answer. So, here he goes with a parable. There was a certain householder, again, certain householder, somebody in mind for Jesus. Unnamed. In this story, why it's a parable, because he's talking about God, Jehovah, which planted a vineyard. Now, the vineyard, let me get where I am, is Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 7, it's Israel. So, the certain householder is God. He planted a vineyard. The nation of Israel. And hedged it round about. He protects it. It's his people. It's been his people since Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then what he's done for him in Exodus. And the wilderness journey. Bringing them into the promised land. God has set forth these people. Protected them. And gave them a special advantage of hedging. And dig the wine press in it. You know, that's what you do with grapes. You gather the grapes, wine. And built a tower. You know, watch around. Protection. And let it out to husbandmen. That's the workers. And went into a far country. Well, it'd be heaven. Be glory. He said, here's the vineyard, here's the nation of Israel, here's the land, here's the wine press, here's the hedge, here's the tower. To the, to the people of Israel, the priests, the elders, take care of the land for me. Take care of the people. And it's been all instructed by the law. Moses wrote down the law of God of what they're to do and what they're not to do. And when the time of the fruit drew, drew near, the crops, the wine, the grapes, raisins, he sent his servants to the husband. These would be the prophets, the men of God you read about in the Old Testament. God would send men to the, the, the authorities of the nation of Israel, uh, where's the fruit? What are the people doing? How are you doing? How's the vineyard? And they might receive the fruits of it. God wants fruit. If you are a fruitless person of God, because I'm, I'm going to include in any dispensation, whether before the law, the law, uh, the Gospels, the church, whatever it is. If you don't produce any kind of fruit, you have failed God. Even Adam. God put Adam in the garden to dress the garden, take care of the garden, to produce fruit. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. This is throughout all the, the, the this is throughout the Old Testament. There are stories that God sent people, they killed them, they abandoned them, they didn't listen to them. Jeremiah, Isaiah. Over and over. This is this is the, the Old Testament in a nutshell. God's servants were mistreated. Now go over to Hebrews eleven. Hebrews chapter 11, and it's kind of, because he doesn't give any name. I mean, we list a whole bunch of people of faith. When we come down to the end, let's see where we are. We'll pick up 1132. What shall I say? 
For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, Samson, of Jephthah, David also, Samuel, and who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Well, what we're reading in Matthew is this is the Jews doing this to God's people. Out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to fight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised up to life again. Others were tortured, not receiving deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Others had trial of crude markings and scourging, yea, more of the bonds and imprisonment. This is what we're looking at right now. They were stoned, they were sawed asunder, were tempted, they were slain with a sword, they were wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Of whom the world is not worthy, they wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. These all having obtained a good report through faith, Receive not the promise. God had some better. So, this is what we're looking at right now in Matthew 21. God, Jesus Christ, says in this parable, verse 35, the husband took the servant, beat one, killed another, stoned another. This is the life of the story of the Old Testament. This is the, the ones that is spoken about in Hebrews 11. There wasn't one true man of God accepted by the people. There's no really true Christian as accepted among the church if you don't go along with their ways. Verse 36 of chapter 21, and he sent other sermons more than the first. Old, Old Testament. Name off the prophets. Ones that didn't even have names. Including Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, Zechariah, Zephaniah. Name them. The major and the minor prophets. Moses, Aaron were prophets. God sent these. Moses had a terrible life with the children of Israel. And they did likewise. Likewise is they mistreated them. They abused them. But last of all, he sent unto his, them his son. Here comes Jesus. So his son, the, the owner of the vineyard, is God sending his son. We know who it's, who it's about. God said, okay, I've sent these, I sent these, these men, I sent the prophets, I sent the men of God, and they mistreated them, they killed them, they abused them. I'm going to send my son. They will reverence my son. But when the husband saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir of the, of the vineyard. Jesus Christ is the king of kings, the Lord of lords of the nation of Israel. He came unto his own, his own received them not. Now, you didn't think God didn't know they would kill him. He knew. Later on, there'll, there'll be the group of Israel corporate that will receive Jesus Christ at the second advent. Right now, he's the, he's the lamb of the sacrifice. So here's the son. Here's Jesus Christ. This is here. Come, let us kill him. And that's what they've all been saying. Through the, many times in the, in the gospel, they will plan to kill Jesus. And when the time came for him to be crucified, they turned him over to the Roman government. Let us seize on his inheritance. All right, so if we kill Jesus, which they do, Pilate said for envy, God says, because you want the vineyard. You want the land. So that piece of land over there, they've been fighting over and against all time. And they caught him. Which hasn't happened yet, but it's going to. Here he goes again. He's going to be telling about the suffering, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Cast him out of the vineyard and slew him.
Okay, Hebrews 13. Notice how we're looking at the book of Hebrews. Not Christian, not church. Hebrews 13. Oh, that's 12. Wherefore Jesus, okay, that's who we're talking about. Also, he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. He died outside of Jerusalem. So if anybody tells you inside Jerusalem or shows you, well, here's, Je here's where Jesus died in the, in the Jerusalem. No, my friend. They took him outside the gate. There was a sacrifice in the Old Testament. They were to bring it outside. That's what the law states. So back to Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Verse 39, they caught him, cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. Calvary is outside of Jerusalem. When the Lord, oh, who's the Lord? Who's the owner of the vineyard? God. Why is it small L? Because the people don't believe it. I mean, the Jehovah Witness, you know, the, the rich on you, he, he says, you know, why call me Lord? Why call me good? Because there's none good but the Father. See, you know, Jesus. No, because he's talking to a man that doesn't believe in him. When the Lord, therefore, of the vineyard cometh, that's the second advent of Jesus Christ, who is God. Because God, per se, is not coming to second advent with vengeance. Jesus Christ is coming second advent at the end of the tribulation period. So look at there. There's Jesus saying, I am God. Because the Lord, the owner of the vineyard, is God. And he says, when the Lord, therefore, the vineyard cometh, that's Jesus. Per as God. What will he do unto these unto those husbandmen? What's the second advent say? What does God say? He that has the Son has everlasting life, that he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And the wrath of God is when Jesus Christ comes, and the wrath of God is hell. So what do the people say? He will miserably destroy those wicked men. <laughs> That's second advent. Those men today that crucified our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, unless they repented, they're in hell today, right now. They're not ever going to get out, only to come into the lake of fire that burns forever. Now watch this. And we'll let out the vineyard to other husbandmen. Which shall render him the fruits of their season. There will be Jewish people who will occupy the land with Jesus Christ, King of King and Lord of Lord. They will produce perfection to Jesus and to God. But meanwhile, that vineyard is seated with the Jews are in it, but they have no control. You know, the, the Pope is running around over there, the Muslims are running around over there, and the, the Christians are running around over there. You know, I'm going to walk the footprints where Jesus walked. I'm going to see the Catholic relic building of something about Jesus is not so. You go over there, you waste your money. Oh, you know, you got to go over and see the Ark, the, the, the thing in, in, in America. You're wasting your money. I've been told, I don't know, I don't care, I don't follow up, but that they, they have dinosaurs. How on earth did you get a brontosaurus on that 
Brontosaurus compared to that little boat. And, and I mean, it wasn't a little boat, little ark, but for a Brontosaurus, that would have been the size of his stomach. If there were dinosaurs, and, oh, you know, and I've seen pictures that got a nice little kitty petting zoo. Noah didn't have a petting zoo. Noah didn't have elevators. Noah didn't have electric uh, exit signs. They didn't, I read the story I, I, I did with my essay. They didn't pitch that thing in and out because it would have been too busy. Then that's not Noah's art. Noah didn't build that ark. It's not Noah's ark. They didn't do it all by hand. They didn't have hand Japheth and Shem helping them build that ark. They used cranes and back holes and whatever kind. They didn't have that in Noah's time. That's not Noah's ark. That's so you can go pay somebody money. Ooh. Oh. I'll wait till God calls up the real Noah's ark from Mount Ararat and says, here it is. And then when he puts Noah on that ark, to preach to us like he preached to the world that did not believe. I'll wait for that day. Okay? Right now, I believe it happened. I don't need to see nothing. So he'll destroy it and will not let out the vineyard unto other husbandmen. That will be the millennium, which shall render him the fruits of their seed. Listen, in the millennium, nation of Israel in their land under Jesus the apostles, Zadok running the, the temple and everything like that. Everything will be fruitful to perfection. That's not today. And that wasn't in Jesus' time. Jesus said, did, did you not, did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders reject? Now you can run that stone to, to the stone of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. You got the gold, you got the silver and iron and all that. And then the stone that was came out of the mountain with uncut hands destroys all the nation. There it is. The stone that the builders rejected. Ah, we don't want that. Jesus Christ, Paul says, is the rock. We don't want him. Why would he be the Messiah? What's so special about him? He didn't conquer Rome. He didn't, we don't want him. Crucify him. The same has become the head of the corner. Well, a, a stone that is a head of a corner, and the corner, and the head, head is the top, corner is the corner. The only stone that is fits that description is the capstone, capstone on top of a pyramid, which is a New Age order on the back of your U.S. one dollar bill with an eyeball, supposedly the all-seeing eye of God. Why does God have one eyeball? Something wrong with him? The eyeball of God is eyes and Jesus. Jesus had two eyes, not one eyeball. This is the Lord's doing. This is God's doing. You rejected that stone. That stone's going to come back. It's going to kick you. It's going to break you. It is marvelous in our eyes. They're going to. The Jews are going to look at Jesus as the great white stone judgment that rejected. You're the one. Come on, man. You you allowed us to crucify. If you were God, you were on that cross. Come down and let's see Jehovah save you. He saved others. He couldn't. You are the one. Really? And they even accused Mary of having a relationship with others. And there's, you know, stories that he had a relationship with Mary Magdalene and all other kind of... You? The Bible says in Isaiah, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You? Therefore I, therefore say I unto you, Jesus, the kingdom of God, that's heaven. It's not the kingdom of heaven. That's the kingdom of God. That's the throne of God. That's the angels. That's the servant shall be taken from you. Okay, now, if, if you run to Matthew as a church doctrine, now you can say, oh, you can lose your salvation. There it is. 
You see the error run into Matthew in the church? Hey, you can teach all Matthew 21, 43. I heard the Baptist church say, go to Matthew, go to Matthew, go to Matthew. Well, I went to Matthew and said, look, I cannot go to heaven. You can lose it. He's not talking to the church. He's not talking to Christians. He hasn't suffered and died yet. He's talking to Jews. Matter of fact, he's not even talking to Jews. He's talking to the scribes and the chief priests. He says to them, you're not going to heaven. There are no Christians. I, I know a preacher. Okay, there are Christians in the Old Testament. You better be careful. You better be careful because he's not talking to Christians. And given to a nation and bringing forth fruit thereof. A nation. Who's that? There's the church. There's the church right there. A bunch of Gentiles are going to get in and God's going to give them salvation. He's going to give them the Messiah. We're going to go out witnessing. We're going to go out witnessing the Jews. We're going to go out witness the Chinese. We're going to go witness the Mexican. We're going to go witness all over the world with gospel tracts, with missionary. And we're going to bring fruit to God, Jehovah. That's going to please God. Meanwhile, while Israel corporate sits up on the shelf. Now, some Jews will get saved, individual. But corporately, they're up on the shelf of the Gentiles, the dead dogs that Jonah didn't want to preach to, that Peter didn't want to preach to, we're bringing in fruit. And when you read the scripture, look at the scripture. If you were to bring a Jewish person to Jesus, to God, they get saved. That's more lovely than a Gentile because the Jews are God's people. There's nothing more that pleases God. You would think a, a dumb, stupid Gentile got saved. Glory to God. No, 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 no. If you bring a Jewish, Israelite, Hebrew to God and they get saved by Jesus Christ, glory to God. Then you think about in that aspect as a Gentile saved. Well, think about the fact is you led a child of God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the Messiah. Wow, we. And you got some Christians out there, they don't do nothing for God. They, their churches don't do nothing for God. We we invite people to our church, but, but we don't invite them to Jesus. And whosoever shall fall in this stone. It's a stone of stumbling. What's the stone of stumbling? Jesus, I don't need Jesus. I got Mary. I don't need Jesus. I got the Pope. I don't need Jesus. I'm going to get a planet. I don't need Jesus. He's not God. I don't need Jesus. I, I'm an atheist. I don't need Jesus. I, I'm educated. I don't need Jesus. I, I'm agnostic. I don't need Jesus. I don't. Fill in the blank. That's a stumbling stone. When you die without Jesus... You fall flat on your face and you're condemned and you are in hell. You, you tripped over Jesus. And in hell you'll be broken. But on whosoever it shall fall. So here is the rock. In Daniel's vision of that rock, it comes and destroys the nation. So when, when the rock destroys America, because America is against everything in the Bible and God and Jesus and everything, it will, it will grind the nation of America to a powder. That's Daniel. So whether you trip over Jesus or whatever you want to believe, whatever you don't want to believe, you're broken. A nation to whom it falls, you're just dust. And when the chief priests and Pharisees, oh, the Pharisees were there, heard, had heard of this parables, no plural. Now, now look at it. They perceived that he spake of them. They got it all right. That guy just spoke about us. Yeah. You're the husbandman. And there's a place that Jesus would say, your fathers killed the prophets, you garnished the scepter. 
All right. They put them in the grave, but, you know, you tidied up and fancy up, put marble and decorated them. You're all part of it. And that goes all the way back to Abel. Because Abel was of God, and he was slain by religion. Cain. So, even if chief priests and the fairies got the idea, uh, it's about us. So, what's their reaction? But when they sought to lay hands on him, they were going to kill him right then and there for them. They feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. See, they didn't, believe, they didn't believe who Jesus was, the Pharisees, the religious scribes. But the people took him for a prophet. The people didn't take him for the Messiah. They took him for a prophet. Like they did John the Baptist. A prophet showed up, but not the Messiah. That's the whole aspect of what they thought of Jesus. And that's sorry, because there was God right there. And they didn't get it. The apostles didn't get it. And that's sorry.